So hello uh, everybody. Uh, so I'm very honored, I mean, uh, to be uh, there today. I will share with you in this presentation not that many slides. So you have seven slides. So if you want to know where you sit, you count the slides so you know if you're approaching from the end of the presentation. Um, I will share uh, with you some thoughts about the uh, the digital ID, some uh, thinking. Um, I will not provide, you know, uh, necessarily answers because we all know that on this topic, I mean, there are many uh, unanswered, I mean, points, and we look forward to getting, I mean, these answers in the course of the uh, upcoming months and, and years. Um, but uh, the first element um, I would like to uh, come back on is uh, a survey that uh, we did on a couple of uh, people in the European Union. Actually, this was on a, within seven countries in the European Union. I think we interviewed uh, something like 1,800 you know, people. You have, if you want I me mean, to know more about this survey, you have the details on the video that is sitting at the, at the back uh, of the room. And we will also provide you the QR code where you have even more details if you want to go really in depth on all the elements uh, coming out of this of this survey. But they, uh, they 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 were I mean there, there was a first point that uh, was interesting is the fact that 66 uh, percent of the respondents I mean were in favor of that so this is a good you know uh, a good sign a good message for us we are not here for nothing. People are seeking, you know, for this uh, uh, digital uh, digital wallet. Um, the second element, um, which is interesting, is that there were two topics that came out, you know, in terms of uh, priorities. Um, the first one is the security. So you will tell me, okay, uh, that's uh, we are a bit lucky. Okay, we just spoke about security trust, so it's a good sign. Okay, we are well on track. But indeed, this is something that came out of this survey. The first element that people, you know, are mentioning is, uh, is security. The second element, and we don't have, I mean, to uh, uh, underestimate that, is convenience. And I have to say that on convenience, uh, the younger you are, the more attention you pay, you know, to this particular point. So I have more, I have a bit some gray hair, so I may be on the left part of the slide, so they're dealing more with security. But anyhow, I think it's good that we have in mind that these two elements have to be balanced, so the security part and the convenience. So I will start with, um, uh, with this notion of, uh, of security. I really think that, um, you know, if we fail here, if we are not efficient, if we are not able, you know, to provide this trust in the overall system, this security in the components that are used by the digital ID, we will fail. And um, the message I would, uh, you know, or the uh, type of comparison I would like to use is uh, when we are using, you know, today our uh, traditional IDs, I mean, they are uh, relying, you know, on elements uh, that can be certified, you know, uh, using a uh, global platform. You know, those are, I mean, the secure elements that are part of the passports of the different elements through which, I mean, we provide our, uh, our identity. And I think <clears throat> it would be our duty to, you know, have the same approach when we move, I mean, to digital, meaning saying that, okay, we may be using tomorrow uh, other type of devices, such as, I mean, smartphones, but in that case, we can relay on the same type of elements as the one which are currently in use, you know, for the physical documents. And um, I think I think it's important that uh, we realize that. So we have means not to compromise the level of security that people expect, you know, when implementing this uh, digital ID. Or you could tell me, okay, Benoit, this is a pure theoretical view, and I don't think this is, uh, this is feasible. I would like that we step back and look at what already exists, what the industry has been able, I mean, to deploy. I put here, for instance, this is one example. It's not the only one, but uh, uh, this is the uh, GSMA eSIM. Uh, with the GSMA eSIM, you know, we've been able, I mean, to create something that is effectively interoperable, put in, uh, you know, uh, all types of uh, smartphones and which is working, you know? And I think this is a good proof, you know, if uh, maybe uh, I was having, I mean, the same pitch a couple of years ago, I would not have been able, I mean, to tell you that, but uh, we have this field proven interoperability that came out of this uh, of this type of, uh, of specification. 
So the the message here is that uh, we should relay, you know, uh, rely sorry on what is existing, what has been proven, what is expected, you know, by our uh, uh, by our citizens, and we have, I mean, some good uh, good assets, I mean, for that. Alors. I'm conscious that in the previous slide, I was only speaking about secure elements. So you could tell me, okay, Benoit, very good, but uh, you know, will the uh, you know digital ID wallet only rely on secure elements? And remember the first slide, I was speaking about trust and convenience, and we have to acknowledge that depending on the use case, depending on uh, maybe some uh, some constraints that can come, you know, from uh, local member, you know, requirements uh, that can come from. Uh, you know various various topics the nature itself of the device we may in all we may not be in a situation where we always have a secure element so we have to acknowledge that and i think uh, this is something that uh, we are uh, we are used i mean to work with uh, so we have i mean to uh, to take that into account and this is the first challenge because uh, behind that, we have to say, okay, how will we ensure, I mean, this interoperability? When I want, I mean, for instance, to move from one device or to, to the other one, how will I ensure this uh, uh, interoperability? We have to acknowledge as well that the type of use cases that can be covered by the uh, digital ID uh, can be, uh, you know, extremely diverse. So I think the, uh, the, the, the message I want I mean, to pass here is that we, as an industry, we really have a challenge on this interoperability, hence the point I was mentioning in a previous slide. Let's build as much as we can on solutions which are field proven, which we already have been, uh, have been using. Alors, I spoke about uh, interoperability. I will speak about clarity. So, you know, to speak about clarity, the picture you have at the top right part of the slide, uh, is coming from a generative AI tool. You know, when you have a problem these days, you just ask a generative AI tool, okay, I would like to have a crystal ball, whatever, and they generate the image. So they have the answer to almost everything. So, uh, but, you know, this being a part, I put here uh, uh, some acronyms, okay? The, the, there is no quiz. I'm not going to ask you, do you know all the letters, all the acronyms which are here? This is just a snapshot, okay? But all these acronyms here are related to the uh, digital ID wallets. You know, we have the Digital Market Act, we have the Digital Services Act, we have the Cyber Security Act, the Cyber Resilience Act, we have the Network and Infrastructure uh, Security Act, we have EIDAS2, obviously, we have the AI Act that will be part of that. Again, huh, this is not exclusive. I mean, uh, there, there could be, I mean, many, many others, but. My, my message and my worry is the number of regulations of, uh, you know, uh, directives which are, I mean, these days coming out. And um, the point I would like to pass here is that we will need, you know, to ensure uh, the coherence, the overall coherence, to ensure that, uh, because, you know, there are some overlaps. Huh? Uh, you, you know, we will see, I mean, by experience, we will implement, you know, that there are some overlaps and the message of like pass is really, okay, let's take time as well to be sure that there is no incoherence. Let's take time as well to fit back, you know, to be sure that we have the capacity to take the lessons from, okay, what has been put on the field that we can adapt and correct, you know, and ensure that at the end of the day, we have the uh, clarity I was, uh, I was mentioning. A good way to ensure this um, clarity uh, is the uh, certification. So, you know, being uh, here, you know, with, uh, you know, at a global platform, I could not speak about uh, something else than certification. So we'll speak about, you know, about uh, certification. And I think, again, to ensure this clarity, having, uh, you know, uh, a clear uh, certi security certification scheme, uh, would be, um, uh, you know, a good way to achieve or to answer I me mean, to the challenges I was uh, I was mentioning. A point there is that uh, don't misinterpret. I mean, the sentence that I put on the top of the slide. I'm not saying that uh, when you deal, I mean, with common criteria, you are not able, you know, to deal with complexity. It's not the message. It's the fact that we have to acknowledge that when we deal with uh, this topic with our um, digital ID wallet, that the system uh, that we are dealing with is a very complex one, the, the ecosystem. The life cycle as well is very complex. So we could use you know, some elements which are coming from the uh, common criteria, but uh, we will need you know, to go 
this is at least you know what I uh, what, what I believe. We will need I mean to go on top of that, and uh, you know rely, for instance, on uh, the, the work that has been done by global platform, etc. But in any case, I mean we'll have to go. Uh, uh, with something that is, to my opinion, I mean, lighter than what we have on the common criteria to achieve, you know, this uh, this end-to-end -end, uh, certification. So the secure elements are obviously uh, a strong basis for this composite certification. You know the notion of composite certification. Huh? You are all familiar with that. Huh? This is the fact that uh, you have, for instance, a hardware platform, you have an operating system, you have an application, and you have, you know, different types of certification that apply for each of these elements. Uh, this is a good way, you know, to deal with the uh, complexity. And as much as we uh, as we can, I mean, we should uh, uh, work in this uh, in this spirit. And again, don't reinvent, I mean, the wheel. As much as we can, rely on existing and field proven solutions. You know, if we are uh, each time trying to reinvent, I mean, the wheel, uh, it's a recipe for failure. Because uh, again, remember my previous slide. I was speaking about clarity. This is a complex environment. If we are, you know, just willing to reshuffle everything, at the end of the day, we will uh, we will fail. So, very good. Let's look a bit ahead. Okay, uh, I would like that uh, we have in mind not only, you know, all the issues about, uh, you know, uh, clarity, interoperability, certification, convenience, trust. I was mentioning. I would like that we spend, you know, uh, a bit some time on. Uh, looking ahead, you know, what what do we have, you know, in front of us for the upcoming years? Are we building, you know, a wallet uh, or digital ID solution for, you know, uh, today's situation? Or do we have, I mean, to look, you know, a bit ahead, what is uh, coming, uh, what is coming to us? I really think that we should have in mind uh, the future directions, you know, the potential future use cases that we have to address, I mean, with this solution. The first one is on um, on the IoT. Uh, we could imagine that tomorrow, I mean, uh, this notion of digital ID applies, I mean, for the IoT. Uh, we could imagine uh, very, uh, this is, I think, uh, self-understanding, uh, that this digital ID would apply tomorrow uh, for uh, what is called, I mean, the metaverse or the virtual worlds. So we have to have that in mind, you know, when dealing with this, uh, with this ecosystem. We have the... Um, uh, cryptocurrency. So I know that these days, you know, it's not really, uh, you know, they are not at the top of their form, you know, uh, the cryptocurrencies, but we have, you know, other initiatives, for instance, I mean, running with the CBDC, so the central bank digital currencies, which are a bit, you know, uh, popping up. And I really think that this digital money, I mean, will come in the uh, next years, you know, uh, uh, in the different uh, countries. Again, here, the digital ID could, you know, apply to this type of uh, use case. And it was mentioned uh, to finish by uh, by Stephanie, you know, in the uh, previous presentation. But from a security standpoint, and I mentioned the CRA, so the Cyber Resilience Act, uh, we have to uh, deal with. Uh, I don't like to really use, I mean, this threat word, uh, but actually we have in front of us some challenges uh, related, for instance, uh, uh, with or linked with uh, quantum computing. And typically, uh, be sure that we integrate, you know, the good ingredients to be safe against, I mean, these potential threats, because the solution, again, that we are going to build uh, will be on the field for uh, quite a couple of years. So, um, just to uh, finish, you know, to uh, conclude, um, I spoke about convenience, and this is absolutely key. Uh, you know, we have to have that in mind. I mean, if we build a solution that is not convenient, I mean, we'll have a, we'll have a problem. Trust, remember, this was, I mean, the first, you know, uh, uh, point that came out of the uh, of this survey that uh, that we did. Interoperability is absolutely key. Uh, remember what I was saying in terms of diversity of uh, use cases, diversity of requirements, even coming from the uh, member states, you know, in uh, in Europe. Clarity. I was related here, you know, to all these huge number of regulations that are on the market today. And um, if I had, you know, uh, one wish is uh, give us, I mean, the time to really be coherent, you know, to ensure this coherence and this clarity between uh, all these uh, all these regulation. And the last one is uh, to solve one of the problems, you know, I, I mentioned, I think that certification is key. And uh, please uh, do not reinvent, I mean, the wheel as much as we can try to relay to relay uh, on, uh, you know, uh, field proven and uh, existing uh, existing solution. 
So uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, the tagline from Thales is uh, building a future we can all trust. So we'd like to say that actually what I would like is that uh, we built together a future wallet we can all trust. Thank you very much.